Rosacea is a common chronic condition, as we all know, with a global prevalence of around 5.46%. It can be a distressing condition for many patients, especially in transgender and gender diverse patients experiencing already the discrimination that they experience. So prior studies have shown that in cisgender patients, um, they've showed an improvement of rosacea with estrogen hormone replacement therapy and combined oral contraceptives and anti-androgen medications such as spironolactone. However, the effects of feminizing hormone therapy in transgender women or masculinizing hormone therapy in transgender men has yet to be studied on the prevalence of rosacea. So we wanted to determine the prevalence of rosacea in the transgender and gender population taking these hormone therapies and compare it to cisgender patients. So we conducted a retrospective cohort study at Fenway Health, which is a large federally based community serving sexual and gender minority patients. And we looked at electronic health records of transgender adults on masculinizing and feminizing hormone therapy and cisgender adults between August 1st, 2014 and August 1st, 2020. And the outcome of rosacea was identified via ICD-9 and 10 codes. We looked at relative risk and 95% confidence intervals to compare the risk of disease um, for transgender patients on hormone therapy versus cisgender patients. A series of univariate analyses were calculated to test for an association with rosacea for the factors to test for an association with rosacea, and only variables that were significant at the P less than 0.05 were included in the log binomial regression model, which included age, race, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, HIV status, and smoking status. So here you can see a table of our demographics from Fenway Health. So overall, we have um, 46,507 patients. We have around 1,400 transgender patients on feminizing hormone therapy, around 1,600 transgender patients on masculizing hormone therapy, um, 25,600 cisgender men, and around 16,900 cisgender women and around 1,000 transgender patients not on hormone therapy. We can see that the median age overall is 27. Um, we have predominantly Caucasian patients in this data set. Um, we can see that transgender women on hormone therapy show a higher percentage of being current smokers. And cisgender men show a higher percentage of having HIV, hypertension, hyperlipidemia and alcohol use disorder. Um, so this is the prevalence of rosacea in our data set. So we see that in transgender men on masculinizing hormone therapy, um, there's a 1.08%, 0.36% um, in transgender patients on feminizing hormone therapy, 1.45% in cisgender men, and 1.23% in cisgender women, and 1.12% in transgender patients not on hormone therapy. So here you can see our analyses. Again, we uh, controlled for age, race, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, HIV status, and smoking status. And you can see that we looked at the adjusted risk ratio and 95% confidence intervals, and we compared it to each one of these groups. So transgender patients on masculinizing hormone therapy compared to cisgender women, cisgender men, and transgender patients not on hormone therapy, and the same thing for patients on feminizing hormone therapy. We also did a sensitivity analysis to isolate the effects of hormone therapy. So we compared the same groups to cisgender women not on hormone therapy, which includes patients that are not on any hormonal birth controls, no menopausal hormone therapy, and no um, spironolactone anti-androgen medication, as well as compared it to cisgender men not on hormone therapy, so not on testosterone. And then we looked at cisgender women on hormone therapy, um, which is the patients that are on um, hormonal birth control, menopausal therapy, or spironolactone. And then we looked at cisgender men on hormone therapy, so on testosterone. So our results showed that 
transgender and gender diverse patients on feminizing growth gender affirming hormone therapy showed a decreased prevalence in rosacea compared to all the groups, as you can see the adjusted risk ratios and the 95% confidence intervals. And we did not find a significant difference in the prevalence of rosacea in patients on masculine, transgender patients on masculinizing hormone therapy compared to all the groups, as you can see um, the adjusted risk ratios and the 95% confidence intervals. And the sensitivity analysis showed similar results. So patients on feminizing hormone therapy showed a decreased prevalence compared to all the groups. So our conclusion, we see, as I mentioned before, that transgender patients on feminizing hormone therapy had a decreased prevalence of rosacea versus um, masculinizing patients on masculinizing hormone therapy did not have a significant difference in the prevalence. And this may um, suggest that estrogen or anti-androgen agents may play a protective role in the development of the course of rosacea. And there have been, as I said before, studies that have shown that um, estrogen and anti-androgens can help rosacea, but this has never been studied in this population. Some of the limitations include our study being unable to determine causation. So that's something we're actually working on right now. Instead of looking at the prevalence, we're looking at the incidence, and that's a working process right now. Um, and I don't have that data yet to present, but we want to see if it's the hormone therapy that's decreasing their risk of rosacea or if it's another factor. So that's something we are going to look at. And further research is required in understanding whether it's the hormone therapies that's affecting this population. So that's something we are looking at right now.